Hey, g'day. Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your hosts, Matt and Steve-O, today. No, Jeff. No, Jeff. Bugger no, him. Kicking out. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's just in the next room, by the way. <laughs> doing, doing adult stuff, so oh, we've got to yeah. be careful. So today what we're going to be doing is recapping the immune system. There's mm. some really cool new information that we can help to summarise and show people how it all works and how it all fits together. Mm. We've done previous podcasts talking about mucosal immunity and systemic immunity. And we talked a lot about these T helper one, um, which is what we call cellular immunity, yep. which is the engulfing and removing part, mm. which you know typically gets rid of all the little things. You know, yeah, so viruses, it's bacteria. Easy, yeah, things that are littler than an immune cell. Littler. Fit, littler. And so what we're finding is so we've got the T helper one, cellular immunity, engulfs and removes smaller things, mm. the stuff smaller than an immune cell, obviously, because mm. it won't fit in. No. Anything that's bigger than an immune cell that it can't eat, it has to flush away and do a chemical attack. And that's what we call T alpha 2, which is mm. a humoral immunity, which is a flushing reaction. So it's basically talking about different types of immune reactions, either inside the cell or outside the cell. Mm. And that determined by the size of the, the, the trigger. I think a classic example is, is if anyone's seen those shows where someone pulls out a tapeworm out of their gut, it's, it's you know, can be metres long. Mm. And if you think of a, a macrophage or any sort of immune cell, then you, can't, you have to look under a microscope to see these things. So this tiny, tiny thing won't attack mm. this big tapeworm, won't do jack about it. Yep. So it, it, it creates mucus, which flushes the yeah. um, tapeworm out. And that's your T-2. And what's interesting with cancer, well, we mm. talk because when, when I first learned T-1, T-2, mm. I'm thinking, I'm imagining tumours, they're yeah. big. They're huge. But what's interesting about the cancer is it's actually the cellular T alpha one immunity that's needed to get rid of a cancer or yeah. for cancer surveillance. And it goes back to that. Uh, uh, this is a little bit off topic, but mm. it goes back to the fact of us needing to induce self destruct mechanisms within the cancer cell mm. to be able to blow it up before our immune system can clean it up. Hey, eh? you, can't, you yeah. can't do an allergic flushing reaction on a tumor and get rid of it. No, nah. it's held. On, it's pretty well attached pretty well attached and yeah. and you know the, the first the early tumors the things floating around the blood they the tumors spread through the blood and they're called yep. metastasizing and when yep. they flow through the blood that's when the as, as cd8 cells if, if you want to know about you know that the cd8 cells they actually kill the their cytotoxic like natural killer cells yeah yep, yep. cd4 cells are like your t helper cells that we're talking yep. about cd3 support all that if you yeah, want okay. the three types of the cds so we'll talk a bit more about that in a sec so the initial um mucosal immunity seesaw we used mm. to talk about was yeah. tlpa1 tlpa2 mm. and then there was one called tlpa3 which is known as oral tolerance mm. or what do i nickname as shit happens because tlpa3 what it does is it works on anything if you get low dose exposure to lots of little things and mm. lots of big things mm. it basically says that's typically what you'd find in your gut contents and yep. poo yeah. and these immune cells are sampling through poo which is why i said shit happens so mm. your immune system allows that to pass through and goes that's kind of normal mm. okay so let it go we don't have to react to absolutely everything um so the t upper one t upper two t upper three works on a seesaw where if t upper one's firing up to kill an infection it suppresses t upper two mm -hmm. it's a very simplified model yeah um but of course in the meantime while we've been working through that model We've had an amazing era of discovery in regards to the microbiome mm. and how the microbiome regulates the mucosal immunity. Mm. And we've also had a um, major uh, exploration into genes uh, around the same time. So mm -hmm. the, the combination of all the new data coming out of the genome projects and the, the microbiome projects has given us so much more data in regards to the immune system that they've now, or not so much discovered, but now we've uh, we've we've realized that there's a whole nother part to it steve mm. did you want to tell us a little bit about this one called t helper 17 <laughs> yeah there's t helper one t helper two t helper three and t helper 17 what happened to the other 14 <laughs> well there's 20 there's another t helper 22 as well yeah. we won't go into that one but there's all these other ones now the t helper 17s have a role with the immune system um and they do help um kill things that are on your skin and in your gut mm -hmm. so they have a role they're there for a reason they're a good guy however Today we're going to focus on sort of some of the nasty aspects of too much uh, T helper 17. And they secrete certain cytokines, which are chemical messengers that tell the, the immune system what to do. And that's T helper interleukin 17 and interleukin 22 and interleukin 23. They're the three major chemicals that are secreted from T helper 17. So these interleukins, so when you say chemicals, so what, mm. what happens is inside of our immune cells mm -hmm. they actually release these things okay? yeah. so they secrete out a chemical mm. and these chemicals are chemical messengers mm. that are surrounding or naive immune cells that don't know what they're doing yep. they get then told hey we're kind of on a mission to do this sort of thing yeah so you're telling me that t alpha 17 um does a lot with skin 
and the, the gut lining, yeah. which is our first line of defense. Very and much so. The, the gut lining itself is a 400 square meter membrane as opposed to the skin being like a two square meter membrane. Mm. Which is why 80% of our immune cells are found in the gut, mm. in particular the naive immune cells that mm. don't really know what they're doing. Yeah. So the TLB17, so you're saying it samples things on the skin and the gut and then sends a message through to the rest of the body saying, this stuff's on its way, attack it. Correct. Yeah, there's, there's cells called dendritic cells. They're the most common name for them. And they actually sample what's going on and they give a message to the naive, or as you said, the T help and naught, they call them, or naive CD4 cells. They haven't decided what number they're going they to They haven't yet decided yet. what number. And now, depending on the chemical stimulus, they can go to 1, 2, 17, regulatories, which is T helper 3, yep. and, and a, a, another regulatory one, or T helper 22. So, so the dendritic cell sort of is like the um, prime minister. Yeah, right. And the other guys are like the generals in the army. Yeah, okay. And just go, oh, no, we've got a naval attack. We better send yeah. the navy. So if you do get a, a, a bug in your bum... Yep. Um, then your T helper 17 will be mobilized. Yep, yep. And that'll go out and attack whatever's there. So the dendritic, so dendrite means long arms or something, yes. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So dendritic cells have got these crazy long arms. They actually live, they, they're stuck in the mucosa mm. and they got these big long arms that reach into your airways. And as the things are passing through, so air, all your inhalants and all your food, and then mm. also through your bowel, um, through your stomach, all those areas, they got these big long arms that mm. reach in. And what they're doing is they're sampling everything. When they get it, when they get a bit, they rip it up mm. and present it to their mates to say, "Hey, if you see something that's got this kind of material or these markers, attack it." Mm. And then it re they release chemicals to say where it's likely to be and what type of uh, oh, yeah. what type of attack. So, if they found this thing on the gut mm. or in in amongst your bacteria and your mm. microbiome, mm. so if the dendritic cells found it there or on your uh, or on your skin, mm. they would show it to the other immune cells, mm. release some chemicals and say, go to the gut and attack. Well, they say go to the bloodstream and it finds its way to the gut. And this is, yep. this is half the problem because with, with t 17, it goes in the system. Now, the problem is if you've got a certain type of genetic makeup, mm -hmm. the t helper 17 can accidentally, oops, attack the joints, for example, in rheumatoid arthritis yeah. or ankylosing spondylitis. Because this is what, so when you get, so, so they get a signal to say fire up, fire up at the same time as they're showing on particles. Yep. If they happen to have a particle of a gut lining or mm. of a connective tissue, or if some of these markers in the bugs are the same, mm. that's how we got autoimmune. Classically, yeah. and, and of course, you know, with the condition I used to have, ankylosing spondylitis, if you've got a type of immune system called HLA B27, don't get caught up on that, and you've got a Klebsiella, they cross react. Yep. So your dendritic cell gets the antigen, presents the antigen. It's called an antigen presenting so cell. So the, so the dendritic cell, so the immune cell, yep. grabs onto the Klebsiella, which Klebsiella is a bug. Klebsiella in the gut, yep. yep. And, and it cross-reacts and you get the autoimmune disease. In other words, the immune system attacks the joints of the body. Yeah, right. And weirder joints, like the sacrum. Yep, yep, and, yep. And these sorts of, and you get this classic AS thing. So the typical treatment then is to destroy the immune cells. Yes. So, we, so what we're finding <laughs> with immune cells... They, they find the Klebsiella in your poo, they rip it to bits and show mm. their mates saying, this thing's not quite right. Yeah. They signif uh, Depending on the dose, and that, could, that dose can be determined by leaky gut wall and that too. Of course so if you've got a thin uh, mucous membrane, then the doses of every... There's no such thing as low dose. No. Everything's coming through high dose, which is why the body has to have an exaggerated reaction. So at the same time, if there's a um, uh, trigger for collagen or connective tissue or something like that then the immune system fires up, gets confused. It's mm. fired up because of the Klebsiella. Yes. And then it goes and attacks a part of your body because it's confused. Yes. The typical treatment for that is to flatten the immune system. Well, yeah, that's one of the treatments. Would that allow Klebsiella to grow more? Yes. So then if you're in that process of doing immune suppressants... Yes. And, and the classic immune suppressant that a lot of people have heard of and, uh, is, is methotrexate, which is immune suppressant, and sulfazalazine. They're the two yep. older types. And then there are newer ones coming through which selectively kill interleukin 17s. Yeah, wow. We. Yeah, so floxicam. But that, like interleukin 17 is your first line of defense, isn't it? <laughs> yes. So if you get a mm. mucosa, because like I said before, like your first line, your, your mucosa, mm. most things that are coming to your body are going to come across that mucosa. So yeah, of course so. so back to ankylosing spondylitis. So sure. HLA-B27, where does that fit in? That's a genetic thing. It's a genetic it? thing you're born with. About 5 to 10% of Australians have this thing. Okay, mm -hmm. HLA B27. So it's not a big deal. It doesn't mean you. It means you're a bit more fired up with your <laughs> video. Watches that. Uh, you're a bit. Your immune system is a bit fired up. So that's good in a way. And everyone thinks, oh, more immunity the better. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it's not. Um, 
So uh, when you get exposed to Klebsiella... It so HLA-B27 it. predisposes you to exaggerated inflammation and a weird immune reaction. Weird immune reaction, that's a good way to put it. Um, but it's triggered by the Klebsiella. Yes. And if you eradicate the Klebsiella, that uh, what happens? You, your genes you can't eradicate. I mean, no. you can't change the fact that you've got you've shown up positive on a test for HLA-B27. Correct. Um, the immune stuff you can block mm. by immune suppressants or mm-hmm. something, or as we'll talk about some natural stuff. Yeah. But ta- f- finding the trigger for the immune activation is pretty handy to eradicate Very that as well. much so. And you've got to remember the papers, that the 2017 paper I've got in front of me, mm. says that the HLA B27 is activated by the gut microbiome. Mm. So, so the gut microbiome oh, is what? interesting. Say that again. The, the HLA B27 is activated by the gut microbiome. Oh, right. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah, so There's what? So if you've got a paper. disturbed microbiome or dysbiosis, or is it specifically Klebsiella, or it could be lots of things? Uh, lots of things. Um, it depends on the condition. Yeah, right. And so, of course, you know, they're treating rheumatoid arthritis with certain antibiotics now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is only research. But, yeah. But here's the big myth between uh, rheumatologists and uh, like, like people treat AS, ankylosing spondylitis, as a rheumatological condition, not yep. a gastrointestinal issue. So you go to the rheumatologist, they'll give you immune suppressants, they'll give you anti-inflammatories and, you know, painkillers, for example. And so, but that's not treating the gut. Hmm. They don't, they kind of go over that because they're rheumatologists, rheuma means joint. And so, you know, they, they treat the joint and it's not really a joint disease, if that makes sense. And yeah. so, you know, we, we, you know and th- this, this paper was published, you know, this, this year and it's titled The Role of the Gut Microbiotica and Interleukin 23 and 17 Pathway in Ankylosing Spondylitis, New Insights and New Updates. So this is sort of the very new information that's come out. Yeah. And that's the title of that paper and it talks about that, hang on, it's the gut. This is a gut yeah. disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not a well, joint I disease. Mean, it's a, this is crazy. Yeah. Because, I mean, 80% of your immune system is found in just sitting gut. in the gut, yeah. in the gut, in the malt. Yes. Which is the mucosal and the gut-associated lymphoid tissue. Yeah. How many rheumatologists are gastroenterologists? None. In fact, the drugs they use make your leaky gut worse. Just to throw another spanner. Yeah. And so, suppress that surveillance against the bugs that are actually overgrowing, creating the cross-reaction and the ongoing triggers. Yeah. And That's they'll say, crazy. diet's got nothing to do with it. You know, I was told that, and that's 20 years ago, but even to this very day. Because good bacteria, uh, too much good bacteria then would also activate Correct. TLP-17. Yes, absolutely. And I'll read this quote for you. Interleukin-23 in reaction to lipopolysaccharides, oh, which well, are cell walls, yeah. and that is directly from the gut. So lipopolysaccharides, for the listeners, we yes. talk about it a fair bit, but mm. lipopolysaccharide is just a bacterial cell wall fragment. Mm. It doesn't matter what it is, good or bad. It, it's, yeah. it doesn't, they don't care. No. Dust and that sort of stuff's a lot of that as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely, especially from fragments from, from mites and that sort yeah. of thing. And that's why that whole theory too with the dirty kids with the healthy kids. Mm. Yeah, yeah, very so much they so. get exposure to these lipopolysaccharide cell fragments mm. and this is the thing that triggers the immune system to actually fire up without the potential of infection yeah, because of it's already dead and broken. Yeah. Um, man, that's crazy, yeah. Well, you know, we, well, I'm talking about AS here. That's what the paper's mm. on because I used to have this thing. Mm. But but I, I could easily substitute that with multiple sclerosis, Graves' disease, rheumatoid, any, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis. Psoriasis, Gillian And how Barr's interesting syndrome. is that too? If you have a look yeah. at these autoimmunes, like you said, T of 17, yeah. mainly gut lining and skin. Correct. So these autoimmune conditions... You know, they've smacked the psoriasis, yes. the vitiligos, those sort of things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, I always, in my brain, I always have that. Li- there's a there's a thing called Murphy's Law. What is that 50-50-90 rule? Mm. Whenever there's a 50-50 chance of picking the right one, there's a 90% chance of picking the wrong one. Vertigo and vitiligo for me. Oh, yeah. I constantly think I'm going to get the wrong one. It's quite embarrassing when you pronounce the medical terms wrong when you're in the industry think think, think vertical mm. bit vi- no vert- no it's got nothing to do with oh, that okay. it's just instantly my brain will just go there's two and which one's the wrong one pick that right okay <laughs> well vitiligo is an autoimmune disease there you go michael jackson had vitiligo and autoimmune disease are the melanocytes yep which means they have white patches on them same yeah. psoriasis so the immune system autoimmune. attacks that again another cross reaction yeah hey is there any link between melanocyte autoimmunity and the kynurinin pathway. Yes, there is. Glad oh, you shit, mentioned that. That wasn't even an intended segue. Really? I'm actually that was genuinely an awesome thinking. Segue. I'm just actually putting it all together as you're talking. Because one of the side effects of high interleukin 17 is an upregulation of the kynurinin pathway. Now, yeah. do we, do we, need, we probably need to go on what that is and say what oh, that yeah. is. Yeah. Is it? 
it's basically tryptophan being turned into wrong stuff. Yeah. Basically quinolinic acid and a yeah. few other things. And that actually causes inflammation and irritation further down the track. Yeah. So that's why one of the, the, the proposed treatments in one of these papers is a low tryptophan diet because tryptophan ends up at the wrong place. Yeah, right. You know, because it is a gut. Remember, most serotonin is made in the gut because yeah. these people have gut disorders. Yep. They take them off tryptophan. Now, I'm not a that's fan a of that. That's a sneaky way of doing it. How's that? You give them the 5-hydroxy tryptophan because right, yes, you can right. bypass it. You can get yeah. the activated form that is a, just a step before serotonin so it doesn't go down that other pathway. Yeah, absolutely. I think, but it, uh, tryptophan's got nothing to do with melanocytes. and mel- That's tyrosine, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so I was a bit confused. There. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, but but the, yeah. the TLP17, there's the kynurin pathway. It stops B3 yep. and all this sort of stuff. So... So it's also uh, very interesting. So now he, here's the other classic thing about the TLP17. The production of TLP17 cells is higher at midnight than at noon. Mm-hmm. So a classic symptom side effect of AS is you wake up in excruciating pain. And by the afternoon, you can be absolutely pain-free. Why? Because TLP17 bumps up at midnight. Is it's that it, when our cortisol is low? Yeah. So, it, so with that diurnal fluctuation of cortisol, so cortisol's high in the morning yeah. and then low at night. So yeah. it's that when the TLP17 is firing up? It fires up at night, yeah. So you wake up in this excruciating pain and the classic yeah. symptom is you get better as the day goes on. Most yeah. arthritis or diseases, you, it doesn't matter, you just, you've just got a sore ankle, it's sore in the morning at night. Yeah. Um, this is a classic one where movement is better because movement and exercise yeah. stimulates cortisol production, yeah. reduces inflammation and you feel better. Yeah, wow. And so the old type of treatment for arthritis was to do nothing. Oh, no, don't wear your joints out. Don't do any yeah, exercise. And yeah. that's so wrong for AS. Yeah, right. Eh? And so and what about rheumatoid arthritis? And that would be similar, wouldn't very it? Very similar. So the autoimmune ones, typically, they're much worse. They get aggravated by rest and yeah. improve with movement. That was one of the classic things with osteoarthritis, mm. the white knuckled one, mm. is mm. where they, you know, if you rest it, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. Um, but with a rheumatoid arthritis, the red one, when you rest it, everything goes bad. Absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. one of the worst things you can do. And it's still, you know, people are, are, are not brave enough as physicians to say, no, you've got to go out there and do some exercise. People say, oh, but it hurts. Yeah. And it's like, but it's the best thing for you. It's yeah. like, do you give them the best advice or the easiest advice? Yeah. Oh, it's a hard one too, though. Well, yeah. You know, we've got to look at the, the fact that. Half of the time, there's a differential diagnosis. Right? Yeah. And they got to almost listen back too, because if it does hurt and gets worse, then yeah. maybe it's an osteoarthritis Absolutely. <laughs> element to and, it. You and, know, and, so. and weirdly, with autoimmune diseases, uh, there's a difference between the sexes too. Oh, yeah. Uh, women get more um, autoimmune diseases than men. All oh, right. Yeah. Uh, and, you, you know, I'll, go, I'll run through into MS, female ratio of two to one. Yeah, wow. Well. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, two to one. Yeah. Lupus is nine to one. Yeah, lupus is a weird one because they've got that estrogen link in there for sure. Very much so. Uh, Sjogren's syndrome, which is yep. an autoimmune disease, nine to one. And Hashimoto's is nine to one, a female so to male. that estrogen element. But I didn't know the MS and rheumatoid arthritis, do, do they give you any indication why? Yeah, it's because of the estrogen. Yep. Estrogen, estradiol in particular, which is E2, mm-hmm. drives up in, uh, T, uh, or T helper 17. Yeah, okay. So they get vastly worse. Now with AS, more men get that one. Yep. Because of HLA B27. Well, hang on, hang on too. So now you're talking about mucosal immunity here. Mm. So if women have a more exaggerated TLP17 mm-hmm. than the blokes, mm-hmm. this can explain why man flu is so much more serious. Because it actually gets past that first layer. It gets into the body. We, we suffer systemically. We are going to get a few letters for that, but yeah, absolutely true. Well, yeah. Man, flu's re- man flu must be real. It's real, all right. You know, that's why the, the, the estrogen is very powerfully... Um, you know, immunogenic and, and quite incredible. Also, the androgens increase PPAR alpha. Yeah. Uh, and PPAR alpha is, is one of the things that, that inhibits your T helper 1. So if you drive up PPAR alpha, you will get a reduced T helper 1, which can leave you open to more infections too. Yeah. And that's, the, that's really cool too, because we, when you look at the essential fatty acids, if you get a nice blend of essential fatty acids, mm. and in particular, get, there's a thing called conjugated linolenic acid. Linolenic acid, yeah. Yep. So okay. different to CLA, which is conjugated linoleic acid. Yeah. But conjugated linolenic acid is one of the really good driver of PPAR alpha, and it runs through as an anti-inflammatory um, mm. through the gut lining, mm-hmm. but then it actually converts through to CLA, which then regulates the rest of the PPAR receptors mm. and does that mainly through the mucosa before being absorbed and fitting into the omega mm. pathways. There's a, um, pomegranate's another one, mm. very good, powerful modulator of PPARs and, and help to regulate that immunity. So, mm. 
That's interesting. And the funny thing is, is um, polyphenols. A lot of these polyphenols work along that mucosal inflammation. Mm. So we're seeing a lot of these um, you know, natural essential fatty acids. It doesn't have to be pure EPA, DHA. Mm. You get it from the, you want a variety mm. because we want to regulate most of these receptors. Um, and then have a look at those high doses of the polyphenols. Artemisia. Um, Chinese wormwood was one of the ones that showed up as a good one, Steve. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that that's a classic one for down-regulating TLP17 or regulating yeah. TLP17. Yeah. Um, there, there are a lot of diseases associated with um, um, TLP17. I'll run through them very quickly. Hey, just, a lot man, just quickly, I just forgot. Yeah. Like, we got crazy. When we, we released the product Multifood, mm-hmm. now Multifood's just got, um, you know, vitamin. Uh, it's a it's a plant-based essential nutrient products so we covered off the water soluble fat soluble vitamins mm. and a couple of the other cofactor nutrients just to make sure people have got it mm. um, but it's all in a polyphenol plant base mm. um yeah but that's got all the pomegranate it's got the cranberries it's got all the other herbs and spices when we first released those products we got plenty of gut we got plenty of good gut ca- um, case mm. studies mm. coming back but the skin stuff was mm. freaky. Mm. Um, people with psoriasis and rosacea. There was so much. When these people did this gut protocol, their skin stuff, the feedback from the skin stuff was phenomenal. We got some ones there that mm. within 24 hours, significant change. Like mm. so, And that it's all through regulating the TL for 17. 17. By, it, by it controlling the that skin. microbiome, yeah. controlling those PPAR and inflammatory receptors on the mucosa. Incredibly so. And th- this, is, this, is where a lot of, this is where a lot of unfortunate, I, I don't want to... I didn't wake up this morning ready to pick on specialists in medicine, but a lot of skin specialists. Not this them, morning, you do. No, other not this, every other morning. Yeah, other, other morning. Mornings. But but specialists <laughs> that, that that you know go to a skin specialist, and you've got say. Yeah, acne. well, there we go. We talked about rheumatologists aren't gastroenterologists. The dermatologists don't. They have to be even I've, less I've, likely I've lectured to consider to a few. your skin. They do not, not consider gut. the gut at all. Yeah. They don't even consider diet with acne. You know these sort of things. I had a meeting with one once a few years ago when we yeah. were doing talks with. Dr. Doug, who's been on the podcast, yeah. and we were doing national talk to dermatologists about upskilling with, with you know, diet and acne and all this sort of stuff. And very scaringly, um, you know, one who was recently graduated, a dermatologist, I said, you know, what, what do you do um, with diet and acne? And um, there was two, three, three doctors in the room, and the conclusion was, um, I can't repeat it, but F all. Yeah, is what they do with diet and acne. They yeah. they just uh, worry about what dose of Rakuten to give them. Yeah. It's not, and yet acne is a classic T helper seventeen condition yeah. because yeah. it's related to the gut. Yeah. and and it's incredibly even you know things like you know uh, asthma, irritable bowel syndrome, yeah. Crohn's, colitis, sleep apnea. Um, I'm reading them off here: uh, eczema, psoriasis, uh, leukemia, yeah. a multiple myeloma, which is a type of cancer, fibromyalgia, osteoporosis, depression, infertility, depressions that interleukin 17 with the kind urinary pathway. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, none yeah. of these things are considered with the gut. No, no, and it's not very gut derived. And a lot of the treatment for those things destroy the gut. Yes. <laughs> like if you have a look at it, like most of them are like um, steroid-based anti-inflammatories or immune hmm. suppressants or. Yeah. Stuff that actually or powerful anti-inflammatories that all of those have got that side effect of destroying the gut, the gut lining. Yeah, absolutely. And the funny thing is, is by destroying the gut lining hmm. in particular um, and increasing the le- the leakiness of the gut wall, the dose of exposure hmm. to even things like lipopolysaccharide from the good bugs, and the dose of exposure to food antigens and hmm. all these other triggers is so much higher. Exactly. And it's crazy. Huh? It is crazy. And, and all these things. So if you're listening here, oh, 2 help 17, what the hell is that? Well, I've just listed a few diseases yeah. there. And, and most people have come in contact with at least one of these damn things. Yeah. And they're all immune related, even infertility. Yeah. Because the TLP7 attacks the sperm well, don't forget, inside your vagina. Yeah, you know? yeah. But it's also got that reaction. So yeah. you got a, you got that reflex instantly. You know, we've got all those herbs like you know, cranberry, slippery on barks, um, and other what they call urinary demulcent yep, herbs um, yep. and mucilaginous herbs are the yep. if you want to Google the type of herbs. Yeah. Those things work through reflex. They irritate a nerve and one mucosa, and by reflex it sends um, mucus coating to another one. So yeah. it does the opposite as well. So you strip out one membrane and they all get stripped out to a of certain degree. Of course they do. You know, even yeah. the acne treatment Rioquitaine is, is a synthetic vitamin A that destroys the mucous membranes, and you've got yeah. lots of mucus in your gut. It yeah. destroys gut and yeah. causes all sorts of diseases, and, and it's yeah. really, really, really terrible. And, and, and this is really scary because these, 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 these diets are absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, speaking of diets, if you want to know diets that have been what shown... What diets to are fantastic? 
Uh, well, the paleo diets with more zinc, vitamin A, and D3 can help uh, T helper 17 immunity. Yeah, right. So right. That's, a, that's a good one to help because it's low reactive because gluten makes it worse. Yeah, so you right. get rid of that. Dairy makes well, it worse. Well, gluten directly stimulates zonulin. Like whether yeah. you're, regardless of your allergic or mm. intolerant status, there's an interaction between gluten and zonulin, mm. and zonulin in what is that tight junction proteins, yes. and it allows for the gut wall to become leaky mm. to actually aid the absorption of this um, peptide. Mm. <laughs> you know, so and then simultaneously, this is the other crazy thing: things that induce zonulin and tight junction proteins in the gut lining do the same thing in the brain, the blood brain yeah. barrier. So you get leakiness in the gut wall, you then get leakiness in the, the blood-brain barrier, which is why a lot of these foods that are associated with gut-derived inflammation are also associated with behavioural and mood problems and Absolutely. that sort of stuff, uh, other than the kynurinin pathway, which is a direct yeah. well, interference of your ability to convert tryptophan to serotonin. The, the MS is a classic T-help at 17 yeah. degrees. And so that that's, means your myelin sheath in your brain are being attacked. Yeah, yeah. And that's no good. Um, no, look, there, 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 there's some interesting things. Like, like we talked about a lot of arthritic conditions, and yeah. uh, I don't know. For those in America, you might know a lot of elderly people who moved to Florida, yeah, to help their arthritis. Have yeah, you ever that, heard that one? I or, actually have heard it. Yeah, or, but I or don't know why. they don't did what I did, which moved from Queensland, uh, from Melbourne to Queensland. Yeah, uh, right. I didn't do it for help, but did it to further my music career. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for those but, who don't know, Curly over here, <laughs> he used to be known as Curly. Was a busker uh, in Surfer's Paradise. Yeah, superstar. Well, well you asked the ladies. Yeah. Um, i tell you what, that would have been a good way to pay for uni. I worked in a fruit that's, shop. That's the only <laughs> way you pay. I worked in a fruit shop. He paid for his study. Um, so I did two jobs. While I was studying, I worked in fruit and veggie shop because I actually I didn't have a... <laughs> before I become a herbalist and a naturalist, we, we were just like meat three veg people like yeah. we, we didn't have a huge variety I had half of this stuff i'm learning about i'd never mm. seen mm. so i decided to work in a fruit shop to learn about all the herbs and see what all this stuff sure. was and go to the markets and that um and in my holidays i used to go back to north queensland and lay turf in that horrid for three months over christmas every oh year it was like goodness. terrible um and you're there busking around in your speedos at yeah the old, my speedos. Um, your budgie smugglers at yeah. surface paradise so it's superb it gets more money yeah, the well, guys. Man, if you really, I, I left Facebook quite a few years ago, but before I did, I was lucky <laughs> enough to find some pictures of Steve O on there oh. in his speedos on the surface oh, Paradise Beach geez. with that long, flowing, curly hair. The old days were. My nickname was Curly, and I had like Matt's curly hair, uh, and it was long. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, you know, and a mullet. I yeah. had a mullet. Yeah. Because you know, I'm 49. Of course, you had a mullet. You, you know, were a busker at Surface Paradise in the it was in the twenties, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the twenties. You know, just before the Great Depression. Mm. You know, in nineteen twenty nine. Ah, well, you know, it, it's true. And 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 you know, moving from Melbourne to Queensland, it, it sort of helps your arthritis too. Just keen trying to. Get oh, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, I um, forgot all about what the bloody hell we're talking. And, about. and that's because UV light down regulates interleukin seventeen and Tiopa seventeen. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, so where does it do it though? Where does it do it? it does it just do it in the skin? Does it just do it where you get the UV light? Because I know we, we do that for things like psoriasis mm. and vitiligo yeah, and that sort of works stuff. works for that too. But what about uh, rheumatoid arthritis? Can yeah. you put your elbow under a light and make it feel it, better? It, it works via vitamin D3. Oh, okay. So just straight out, you can increase your vitamin D production, yeah. D3, and then that through that mechanism, vitamin D3 helps with an Absolutely. inflammation. So, so these oldies that go to yeah. Florida or Queensland wear yeah. shorts and T-shirts hey. more and... Oh, this is, I've got a lot of weird questions for you today because yeah. I love this sort of stuff. Yeah. Steve has got some great data and kind of, and I'm I like the idea. I try to bring it all together and try to mm. work out how it all fits. Mm. You know, um, you know the surfers, the guys that go out surfing all the time. Yeah, right, they call them surfers. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, just in, just in case you just in thought, case you thought I was referring to the surface yeah, of this yeah. table or something yeah. or surface paradise. <laughs> I think it's same surface. No, just screw with you now. Um, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, those fungal infections. Yeah. So excessive sunlight will also suppress the T-alpha-17 and allow infections to grow on the skin. Correct, yeah. Yeah, right. So, so with these, make it worse. So when some of the people that get these fungal infections, you see it on the, the surfers. Surf, I go, I now I'll trick surfers. myself, I don't even know how to say it. I've got the 50-50-90 rule and it sounds the same anyway. Um, so those guys there, because they get the tan, mm. so it makes it easier to see the splotches mm. as well. Mm. I thought, and that's what a lot of them go, oh, yeah, no, it's only because I've got a tan you can mm. see the splotches. Mm. It's like, mm. no, I think... Because of the tan, you've actually got a fungal infection growing. Yeah, yeah, right. That's right. It knocks out tea. Because you remember, t- we're, we're mm. picking on tea up at seventeen today. We actually need it. Oh you know? yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, it it, it just means that. So if we too overly suppress the tea up at seventeen, yeah, our, our first line defense is gone. Your skin and your gut, our mucosal immunity is yeah. gone. Absolutely. So we need to we need to 
modulate our TI per cent. We need to Absolutely. stimulate the, the TI per 17 to a certain degree, but we need to stop it from going overboard. Yeah, you absolutely. mentioned before, you mentioned before that um, with a sleeper, that diurnal pathways, cortisol, yes. we also mentioned that the drugs that they used to treat are prednisone based drugs. Yeah. So someone that's adrenal exhaustion or someone that's, um, we know with all most forms of autoimmunity, it's preceded by a phase of adrenal dysfunction. Mm. You know, so if your adrenal glands are being exhausted, they lose the ability to um, secrete the cortisol in response to your inflammatory stress. Mm. Then that's that could pre. So the sort of things that could predispose you to a TOP seventeen dysfunction would mm. be an overgrowth of gut bugs. Yes, and just an overgrowth. Yeah, like it doesn't even have to be a bug. No, hey, it's because, lipo polysaccharides. Yeah, because the over- so uh, having that. So, hey, when we're born, do we have any T helper 17? No. Or do we have to build it up? You have to build it up. Yeah, right. You're born T helper 2 dominant. Yeah. And that's pretty much what you've got. Yeah, yeah. But then you're just flushing reaction. That's why kids just sneezing and snots all the time. And flushing and and Mm. squirts and number ones, twos and number threes. And asthma rates are really high in kids and then they, quote, grow out of it. But they actually grow into the bugs. Yeah. yeah. And so as we get exposure to the bugs and as we get exposure to the dead bugs from Mm. dirt and dust and Mm. that, it actually helps to offset that. Yeah. But as we build up a certain microbiome, that lipopolysaccharide exposure from your good and bad bugs mm. will be driving at TLPA 17 yeah. to come up. Absolutely. And then by the time we actually build a coating, which probably takes, what, a couple of two years of age, it takes us... Yeah, I reckon by two. the age of two, we got a, 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 a certain decent microbiome. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a certain coating across our gut wall that we'll pretty much carry on for the most of our life from there. But that... So by the ages of two is when we start seeing people growing out of their allergic reactions. Mm. So we've as we've built up a microbiome, a healthy gut lining of bacteria, because we're born sterile. We are. So you've got to get a mouthful on the way out, and then you get your breast milk, you know, and all that exactly stuff. Exactly right. Um, so oh, that's crazy. So in the early days, if we can support T alpha seventeen to get regulated, yeah. So what controls T over 17? Is it, is it the adrenals? Is it just cortisol? Yep, and, and your diet and lifestyle, like, um, for example, broccoli, yeah. egg sprouts, um, so T helper three, T helper three regulates T helper one and two. Yep. So I hope for people, we're not losing people. It here, regulates T helper The oral tolerance. Yeah. So the our oral tolerance, our shit happens one I was talking about before, that helps to control T helper one's over infection. So if you get triggers to from bacteria mm. and but a low dose, the mm. T helper three will release chemicals to mm. say, hey, back off. Mm. If T helper two is going crazy, then T helper three will tell it to back off. Mm. Does, is there one of those, where does T helper 17 fit in that simplified seesaw? Very much so. If you think of a seesaw, T helper 1 and T helper 2 directly antagonize each other. There's so when chemicals. one's up, the other one's yeah, down. Yeah, they yep. directly, there's like interleukin 13 from T helper 2 suppresses T helper 1 and yep. interleukin 2 from T helper 1 suppresses. So they, they actually act like a seesaw. Mm. The T reg is yep. one that really is antagonistic towards the T helper 17. So T reg was the one we called T helper 3 before? Yeah. And oral tolerance? Yeah. And, and it still regulates. And yeah. T reg. So we've got four d- names for it now we've introduced you to today. Yeah. And it creates chemicals yeah. like transform and growth factor beta. Yep. Interleukin uh, 10. Interleukin 10. Yeah. And that normalizes T helper 17 because that yep. happens a lot in the gut. So again, it's back to oral tolerance. Oh, oral so tolerance. So if you've got yeah. a good, healthy gut wall, and you have the doses mm. that are getting to the dendritic cells. So you can have a an aggressive um, T helper 17 mm. within your mucosa. Yep. As, uh, actually working within... The chemicals are released into the snot. They are. Into the mucus. Mm. And those chemicals in the mucus will attract other immune cells or will uh, induce... Um, like for, uh, like um, prevent adhesion mm. and prevent translocation into the body. So this yeah. T over 17 provides a tough first line defense that will keep your microbiome under control mm. and also prevent infections from getting past that point. Yeah. If the oral tolerance, if the mucosa immune system, the regulator immune system of the mucosa is saying, hey, the dose is not getting, it's not getting past mm. the microbiome. It's not getting past the bio barrier through our physical barrier into our body. Mm. The, the T regs will then say back off. Yeah, exactly. So by maintaining a healthy gut wall, mm. by maintaining the populations of your microbiome, you can actually stop T over 17 from losing control. Control, absolutely. And it's the T reg, the T over 3 will be saying, hey, it's not getting into the body. It's not affecting us too much. You're doing a great job. Yeah. Just stay there, what stay you're doing. There. And so the things that make us lose our regulatory T over 3s mm. is pretty much. Leaky gut wall, 
systemic infections. And, and overgrowth to infections yep. in the gut. So if you have a lot of carbohydrates in your diet, that's uh, really yep, bad. Yep, yep. Uh, Low-carbohydrate diets have been shown to be beneficial for AS and rheumatoid and all those sorts of things. Yeah, because it the, the lowers the microbial load. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, wow. So it's very important that, that you get your diet right. Even things like and coffee because of polyphenols. The herbs, yeah, exactly. Uh, you yeah. Say, so the herbs that we've seen that oh, help to regulate. You know, so you got, yeah. And they're all poly... A little, not all of them, but a lot of them are polyphenols. Yeah. So we've got a lot of these... Um, so Chinese wormwoods, yep. we've got the coffees, um, we've got cranberries, we've got berberine. pomegranate, berberine. Uh, Epigallia catching gallate. Which is green tea. Yep. Endographus. A- oh, that's what it is there. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, even even olive leaf and those sorts of things, oh, basal yep. skull cap, um, <clears throat> yep. you know, boswellia, lipoic acid, all these sorts of things that you classically associate with healthy gut. It's funny because if we were rattling off What's good for your gut? You so know, like NRF2 ginger. activators yeah. too then because we've got well, all those NRF2 receptors. Yeah. yeah. And exercise. Yeah. What's the exercise? Is that Because the, I noticed on your list you've got exercise mm. to fix this. So, I mean, you know, some people think they exercise too much and they get um, sick. Well, they get sore joints or they may get a suppressed immune system. Ah. We're trying to suppress the immune system. Yeah, so if we've got an overactive TLB17, doing yeah. the exercise, you get two things that happen. You get the cortisol surging. Yep. And you also get a lot of NRF2 activation yes, through very exercise. Much so. so that will actually go through and toughen you up. Yeah, and it normalizes your immune system. And it's only if you go overboard with exaggerated levels of cortisol and deplete your nutrient status. Mm. And simple things, man. One of the main mechanisms between overtraining leading to immune suppression mm. is actually depletion of zinc, depletion of glutamine. Because mm. uh, you've actually leaky exhausted gut. those things and yeah. you get a leaky gut wall. Yeah. So Terrible. then your TOP17 doesn't get a chance to work, or even if it does... It, the, these immune complexes go straight through and activa- activate a TLP1, TLP2 response. And, and too much exercise is, is a bit of a, uh, you know, you see people who say, oh, I don't want to go to the gym, I don't want to overexercise. Well, it's very, you know, you still have to do a fair bit of exercise to overexercise. It's not, yeah. you know. Um, one of the funny well, ones not, here... D- it depends where you are in your exercise journey mm. too. Yeah, exactly. Some, some people are just starting and they... That coach might go, man, I can do this without getting overtraining. But those people might need to ease into that. Yes. <laughs> uh, there is one thing I want to run by you. Nicotine. Yeah, also. Run by me. It sounds like more exercise. More exercise things. <laughs> no, this is the antithesis of exercise, which is uh, nicotine. Nicotine is extremely good and it's been shown in trials to be great for, you're not going to believe this, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. Well, we always knew that, but I thought it was from reflex. I thought it was the... So they, the old treatment for ulcerative colitis was smoking. smoking they used yeah. to tell you, and, but the, the mechanism of action, they used to say, is via reflex. So maybe this reflex is not a reflex. Maybe it's, it's not a nerve reflex. It's T upper 7 yeah. So this whole stuff that we're taught in Naturopath College about reflex action for urinary demulcent, the reflex action of smoking, irritating the airways, making mucus in the mm. bowel, mm. it's just T upper 17 It's not mm. a nerve-induced irritation signal. It's a chemical symbol. Yeah, it's, so, it's it's a, so you get a chemical signal but it's so instant so it's not as if the snot that you're making in the airways is working its way to the bowel (laughs) you're irritating the airways you get mucus in the bowel yeah so that happens through the mucosal network of immune cells yeah of course that's so the signals are running that fast through the bloodstream and that's oh well well, wait a minute here i am acting like an idiot uh, specialist um splitting it between bloodstreams and stuff Mm. there's compound like these cytokines that we're talking about Mm. interleukin-6 for example Mm. i Interleukin-6 can be released immediately mm. from cells, mucosa, immune cells, nerve endings, mm. nerve synapses. Mm. Remember there was a phase there where we didn't know if interleukin-6 was... Well, maybe I didn't know. I just tricked myself. Um, interleukin-6, yeah. I didn't know if it was a brain chemical, an immune chemical, a <laughs> nerve chemical, inflammatory chemical, an immune-stimulating yeah. chemical. Because could, you could trigger anxiety with interleukin-6 yeah. b- better than bills. Very much um, so. You know, you can trigger... So, so honestly, so what's happening here, these, these are cytokines that we're talking about, these are chemical messengers. Mm. They're not just bubbling out of immune cells no. like histamine. Well, no. histamine comes from nerve synapses too. Does too, yeah. So all of these chemical messengers, we can't really separate... No. A nerve cell and an immune cell. Correct. In fact, how do immune cells in the brain work, Steve-O? Well, there's, uh, there's cells like uh, uh, glial cells. Them. Yeah, yeah. And, and the glial cells were... what will se- But don't they look like nerves? Glial cells look more like a nervy they, synapse than an immune cell. Yeah, they are, but they also release carbohydrates for the, for the astrocytes. Yeah. But, but also, the, the glial cells just, just work as immune cells by um, protecting and secreting interleukin-16 and those sorts of chemical yeah. things. 
Uh, and, and but are they immune cells or are they nerve cells? Well, it's like um, it depends who discovered them, whether it was a, a neurologist or a yeah. immunologist. <laughs> oh, man. Because they, they, you can't separate them. You're absolutely well, right. Well, you can't separate them because they're all in the one big bloody bag called a human exactly, being. Exactly, exactly. And, and this is why, <laughs> you know, Dr. Jeffrey Bland used to talk about the, oh, yeah. the human body not really being... Quickly. Yeah, he, as you know, as you in, know, the methylene tetrahydrofolate <laughs> reductase polymorphism has got no, to. Be, yeah. Oh man, he was amazing. And, and guy. you go, as you and know, then and then he'd stop and go, "What the hell are you guys trying to take <laughs> notes for? Put your pens down. You can't write this fast." As you know, <laughs> he's <laughs> that was awesome. Amazing, uh, not bland at all. No, not no. bland at all. If you, if you ever, if you, st- oh, he still does. He's about eighty something now, but I Is reckon. He? Yeah, he was good. Man. Institute Talk. of Functional Medicine yep. wasn't his thing. Google yeah. him, Google him. There yeah, you go. he's good, man. Dr. He's a Jeffrey genius. Bland. He, he's genius. a great guy too. Uh, and, and, yeah, I hope he's still alive. I'm talking like he was dead then. No, he is a great guy. I, the last I heard, I mean, he, he's a great, nice guy too. I was talking to him about fishing about 20 years ago. Last time I spoke to him. Yeah, right. So, you know, but but he, he is a he's a true genius. He's like freaky smart. Uh, yeah. And and you know, we all looked up to him for for, for decades. You know, he was, yeah. he's, a, he's a he's a guru in the air industry. But he used to talk about, you know, the, the body being a web and not systems. Like when we studied, yeah. it was like, oh, let's do anatomy. Oh, what's the first part? The musculoskeletal system. Done yeah. that. The next part, oh, it's the immune system. Oh, we've done yeah. the immune system. Then you've got a, a nervous system. And, you, and all of a sudden, you mention chemicals there that you mentioned. But you, which, which chapter yeah, is exactly. it Yeah, exactly. Because they're these stupid anatomy books are in chapters. It's like they did maths and physics as different yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be learning the same. Su- that was the greatest thing. I basically did the same subject twice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it's very similar, and and this is the whole problem with this is is that chemicals in the body, you know, you know even serotonin, people think that's a a, a, a neurotransmitter. Most of it's yeah. in your gut. Yeah. So it's a gut hormone. Yeah, yeah. It's not a neuro- yeah. Eighty percent of it's in your gut. Yeah. And a little bit in your brain. Yeah. Bloody hell. So is that a neurotransmitter? Well, I don't know anymore. Yeah, if if you do majority, I'm starting to think I'm losing my mind. <laughs> Or is it my gut that I'm losing? Yeah, it's like you're Probably losing your skin. mind. It, it's, it's crazy, <laughs> but this is this oh, that's is the whole crazy, thing. man. Oh, uh, you know, here's here's a classic one. Um, metformin is that a diabetic drug or is that a drug to reduce inflammation and by knocking out our uh, TLP seventeen? You see, it's a loaded question. Yeah, well, it is, Steve, and I'm going to guess B. <laughs> yeah. Or C, all of the above. Yeah. Uh, yeah. it, because it upregulates acromantia in the gut, yeah. which downregulates TLP yep. 17. And it has big effects on PPAR receptors PPAR too. PPAR receptors, absolutely. And that's crazy. And then the old natural alternative to metformin is berberine. Berberine. Which you mentioned, it does berberine pretty much does the same it. sort of stuff. Yep, cinnamon does too. Yep. And so, so all these things that help your joints, you know, is, is it working? But it's just working via your gut. Yeah. And this is where, you know, Hippocrates talked about being, you know, your gut being the seat for yeah. all diseases. And when I was first taught that in naturopathy, because you, you, you know, you got to remember 20 years ago, we didn't know yeah. why or what. So you put someone on a gut detox, you'd help their diet and their joints would feel better. And you kind of go, oh, yeah, that's kind of how it works, I think. But yeah. now we know why. That's crazy, eh? Yeah. Hey, I got, so this is really cool because I'm starting to piece it all together in my yeah. head now. Hopefully I can explain it to other people too. So mm. with the TLP17, that will be our innate defense mechanisms mm. within our gut that's mm. picking up on challenges and telling yes. our body to fire up yes once that gets beyond our bio barrier mm. and our microbiome in and our gut and it gets systemic mm. that's when our tlpa one and tlpa two are recruited yes to aid a more um, exaggerated or more of a chronic defense mechanism very much so so if for example, that antigen then is small and the trigger mm. was small. Mm. The TLP17 fires up, it then recruits the T helper 1, yes. which is why rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, uh, the uh, multiple sclerosis, mm. your Crohn's disease, they're all associated with T helper 1 yes. um, immunity and all yes. those cytokines. The TLP2 side that gets recruited to do the flushing yes. reactions long term will trigger the asthma, the eczema, weird things like lupus. Mm. Um, um, ulcerative colitis mm. instead of Crohn's disease. Mm. Um, so they're all associated with the cytokines associated or the chemical messengers associated with TLP2. Mm. So when we have, when we create a uh, protocol, mm. uh, when we need to treat these things, we need to, first of all, for the TLP17, we need to regulate the gut microbiome. Very much so. And to do that, we have a product called Gut Right, mm-hmm. which is full of the polyphenols, the cinnamons, and all those sort of as- all the the thing of this massive list of herbs and polyphenols and nutrients, PPAR receptor act- um, agonists, and that sort of stuff, mm. are all in that one gut product, and it's designed to actually control the gut microbiome and stop the overgrowth of gut bugs. Correct. Um, not just indiscriminately feed them to increase the number like prebiotics would. It's actually a modbiotic to modify that. Mm. 
So that would work on the TI Opus 17. Very much we, so. We released a product called Resilience. So in the Resilience, we've got the, the, we've got the turmeric, we've got the boswellia, we've got the reishi mushrooms, we've got the artemisia, the Chinese wormwood, we've got the emla. Um, so that one there is formulated more to have a systemic effect yes. for these, for once someone's polarised. Mm. So once their TI Opus 1 and TI Opus 2 is polarised mm. to either a, a, a diagnosed autoimmune condition, mm. you've got to do both. You've got mm. to treat systemically to break that cycle because the chemicals released from that immune system contributes to leaky gut wall. Very much so. So if you've got an ongoing, so if you've already got asthma or mm. if you've already got um, uh, acute asthma or chronic asthma diagnosis or if you've already got rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis and those things, you need to break that t upper one t upper 2 cycle. Very much so. Well, first or at the same time. Mm. Otherwise, you'll never fix the gut stuff because even if you're modulating the gut, if you're left with a leaky gut wall because of this ongoing inflammation, if you're left stuck in chronic stress mode because of this ongoing immune activation, mm. your gut wall will become destroyed. Absolutely. Which therefore means you've lost the regulatory oral one. Tolerance, and yeah. the, the oral tolerance is what regulates both forms of systemic immunity as well as T-op this TLP17 mucosal immunity. Absolutely true. So and the big vicious cycle, you've got to treat it. And yeah. now the, when you break it down as well, Yep. And you have a look at the nutrients. We have these things called essential nutrients. And regardless of what we think we're doing with herbs and plants and stuff like that, mm. if you're deficient in vitamin C, you got scurvy or whatever, this ain't going to work. Or if you're deficient in vitamin A, if you've got actual nutrient deficiencies, zinc, glutamine, other vitamins and minerals. So we need to make sure we've got the essential fatty acids covered. Yes. We need to make sure we've got the essential vitamins and minerals covered. Mm-hmm. We need to make sure we can modulate and balance the systemic immune system mm-hmm. because we've only just met and you've possibly got imbalances and polarized immune stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've got to maintain it all by regulating the gut. Yes. So that's, and then exercise. If yes. you're not exercising, you're kidding yourself. That's right. Um, and you've got to watch what you eat. Yes. Not too much sugar because no. you're going to overgrow the bugs. Yeah. Not too much salt either. Not too much salt. Yeah. If you have too much salt in your yeah. diet, salt dries up into leuka- a TOP 17. Yeah, right. So that's a good and a bad thing. When, when you've got a, 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 a mucus thing going... Is that going, why my nose runs when I go to the beach? Yep. And and you get um, a lot of running noses when you've got a cold and flu and you, it tastes salty. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. because it's trying to get rid of the bug. Yeah, wow. Well. So it's not a bad thing. It's just that that's, that's the way it works. So, so you know... And, you know, skin... You know, the other thing too... You know, Every time I was constantly covered in cuts and scratches mm. um, growing up, but it was always going to the beach. It was always go to the beach and get the salty water in it. We used to do yeah. a lot of salty water. Does it do it at the skin as well? Yeah, very so much. So if you so. do a salty water in to clean out a cut, and that's a, it'll activate the TLB17 to kind of Absolutely. clean up, clean up the Also, the high salinity kills the bugs. It's yeah. a great salt, is a, is a great sterilizer. Yeah, right. And that's why a lot of people use, you know, saline yeah. washes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, saline, yeah, yeah, salt yeah, washes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's how it works. Yeah, cool. So, you know, again, it's not it's not that sort yeah. of that, that it's bad or good or anything. No, it's, it's just a thing. It's a but thing. we need to know what it is and how to regulate it yeah. and how to manage it. I mean, there's a beautiful chart here showing how, how T Opera 1 and T Opera 17 work together yeah. to destroy the organ. Well, what we'll do is, uh, oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what we'll do then, we'll create, a, we'll create a bit of a blog for everyone mm. that we can kind of let them use this because it's a lot of people are still running on that same old paradigm oh, yeah. of TLP1, TLP2 because it's very convenient seesaw. Very convenient. We've just thrown in a couple of other seesaws here. Oh, there are a couple of other seesaws. And, and, and the, the, how it affects almost your entire body is the scary thing about this. There's yeah. so many diseases. Well, I'm saying, man, I mean, instantly release. It's not just mucosal immunity we're talking mm. about. We're talking systemic stuff. Systemic. And nerve, like release from nerve endings, release from cells. It's like... Well, the kind of neuron pathway is upset. Yeah. So that's all your nerves and that too. You, 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 you're yeah. basically stressed. I mean, seriously, if the weirdest thing is the amount of impact that things like serotonin, the chineurin pathway can have at your transit time of your bowels. Yeah. But the simple process of slowing down your transit time will increase your exposure to dead bacteria significantly considering 10% of the dry weight of our poo is dead bacteria. Mm. So if that stuff's not leaving your body, those lipi- lipopolysaccharides are coming back in. Mm. And that's just the bacterial cell fragments from the yeah. good stuff. I'm not talking about the toxins your body's actually trying to get rid of. Yeah. Such and as oestrogens and things yeah, like that. Yeah. They can flare up the whole and, thing. And here's a massively loaded question. You ready for this one? And it, it's sort of a general question. You know, the, the chineurin pathway causes quinolinic acid, which causes irritation, anxiety, and basically you can't escape that. Yeah. How many counsellors, psychiatrists or, or such treat that pathway? Uh, how many, um, how many um, drug manufacturers have even looked at their drug's effect on that pathway? Because their target's somewhere else. They don't even look at that. No. 
Man, that's a bit scary. Up. You can't counsel hey, what your else? quinolinic acid levels Now down. I keep thinking, I want to know about, with these skin wounds, the other yeah. things that we use is iodine, iodine. and honey. Yeah. Like, so what do they, do they boost the immune to honey? No, honey h- does hydrogen peroxide, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it's, and it's super antimicrobial. And, and just sterilizes. Sterilizes it, yeah. 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 You know, iodine oh, just sterilizes it too, does sterilize it? as well, topical yeah. sterilization. Yeah. So, so, you know, these, these things are well known for those sorts of things. So yeah. there's topical sterilization. Um, you know, with wounds, you just want to topically sterilize. Yeah. You don't want to upset the whole immune system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in hospital, if you've got a severe cancer, they, they can give you um, interferon, gamma yep. interferon, which is drives up your immune system to kill any yep. loose sort of... They'll, they'll yep. target the big tumour with something cut, burn, And poison. that's a TLP1 chemical messenger. Yeah. So it's another cancer. one of those ones that drives up TLP1 yeah. to kill off the cells. cells. Yes, very expensive drug yeah. too, so very interesting. Yeah, well, don't get cancer. No, don't get cancer, it. it's better. Bugger so that. there's lots of hormones Holy that hell. also regulate T helper, um, T helper 17, yeah. you know, leptin. Um, and, and leptin is <clears throat> one that drives it up. So if you are overweight, yeah. you are more prone to inflammatory conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of T-helper 17. Yep. And, uh, I mean, the adipokines themselves. Yep. They, they, these chemical messengers come out of fat cells. Yeah. These infl- inflammatory mediators directly mm. can come out of fat tissue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Very much so. Insulin. Ad- so cytokines when it comes from an immune cell. Yeah. Adipokines when it comes from a fat cell. Mm. Myokines when it comes from a muscle cell. Yes. So, I mean... These th- <laughs> these chemicals aren't they? They just slap themselves around. They don't, they got no loyalty to any system no, at all. Make do they? Up. They're just everywhere. Very much so. And why are we talking about these immune system? It's not an immune system. We just a got a <laughs> system. It's a system. The great thing about the system is that it works together. Yeah. You know the the fat the leptin that drives up the immune system yeah. is part of the immune system. Insulin drives up the immune system. Yeah. And yet we think of that as some sugary thing, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it drives up, insulin like growth factor one drives up. Yeah. So that's why a low carbohydrate diet reduces inflammation as well. Oh, man. No, it's a bit scary, isn't it? Oh, it's cool, though. Yeah, it's like cool. It's really cool. But the funny thing, it's all the same. Mm. Like, we always go back to the same lifestyle advice mm. that's been around for thousands of years. Uh, it, it, it's the same stuff. We yeah. go back to the same stuff thousands of years. Actually, it's not the same stuff because the, the, I'm talking about weird alternative complementary unorthodox stuff mm. as mm. opposed to what about a hundred years ago when another form of medicine came yep. in and said this is called orthodox mm. now everything else is alternative yeah exactly and that's the one that's doing all the weird stuff very much so wow uh so so we've got this massive sort of immune system thing going on all these conditions are associated yeah. with it no specialists are really looking at they, they treat their specialty and they look at the one little area and yeah. they go, oh, i'm a joint guy well, you need to be a generalist not a specialist yeah like well, you can't you can't specialize in a system and ignore others. You need to be you're better off having a generalized knowledge across a more like a general practitioner but, but yeah, of, of doctors. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but that's not the case either. So they're not generalist. Yeah. If if you had um, uh, avert gut symptoms and you went to a rheumatologist and they were bad, so your gut symptoms yeah. are associated with rheumatology, that he, he he or she would refer you to the gastroenterologist. Yeah, this <laughs> is like. I don't know. You oh, should, man. You know, it's like, that's not my area. I'm not a bowel guy. I'm the joint guy. I fix these yeah. things from here to here. Anything up or down from that. I don't know there's blood pumping through this thing that's coming from, you know, and all the nutrients yeah. coming from your gut. But, but that, uh, you know, and it's really quite scary. Yeah, man. I remember it when I was in my 20s and I had the bad arthritis. You were mocked if you asked if... if I, I was mocked when I said that I used to eat pizza mocked. Sunday night. Mocked. That's a word we don't use enough. Of. I was mocked uh, because... I was laughed at because mock, I, mock, mock, I, I, mock. I said... Is that what they do? Where they laugh at you and they mock you? They yeah, go, yeah. Mock, it was a bit like that because they said... I said, look, every Sunday night when I, when I eat pizza, I, Monday morning I'd be in pain, you know. Is it pizza... You know, exasperate. Oh, no, that's silly. You know, you, you think about it. Your, your back's here and you, you, you know, you eat your stomach in here and it's nothing to do with each other. And... and, and the conclusion was that I was eating the pizza on the floor and I should eat the pizza at the table instead of on, the, on my lap on the floor. That, that, honestly. And I believed it. Oh, yeah. I believed it. I'm here to say so. Yeah. Because a specialist told me, a specialist at the oh, yeah. Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. Yeah. You know, top yeah. dude. You know, with a, wear a bow tie and everything. So that, what? <laughs> he used to wear a bow tie. And mocked you. And mocked me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you think about it. What did you say? Well, you, mate. Don't mock, 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 mock. Yeah, 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 you're wearing yeah. a bloody bow tie. You well, yeah, I used to go to these meetings of AS societies in Caulfield in Melbourne for those. In, in, and, and, and everyone used to say the same thing. You go, yeah, I used to, 
I, I eat these potatoes and it makes. Do you say, do you do it on the floor? Yeah, it's like, like sit on the table, mate. It's like we all knew that food had something to do with it, but that we'd just be told no. Eat somewhere else. Eat, eat it's somehow it's else. Just a different posture. Yeah, of course. I was sitting on the floor eating a pizza, and no, no, eat at the table. So I say, still eat the pizza though. <laughs> It's true, and I believe it. You know, and oh. I thought I was like I was a chemist at the time. I thought I had some knowledge, and yeah. you just believe it. It's quite scary. <laughs> oh, oh mate, yeah. we better. Oh, we better wrap it up. I mean, we better I, wrap I think it up. you confuse the hell out of everyone. I think we. No, <laughs> I don't think so. I think. Oh, well, hopefully we helped a lot of people because there's some really cool stuff. But mm. let's summarize what we got. I, yeah. I really think this will make a great blog, mm. and I think it'd be a good reference to do not just a blog. We do a proper article that we we'll keep it up on the web page as okay. a proper proper reference thing because. Sure. This is really cool new information that's mm-hmm. finally we got enough to get a proper summary around it and, yeah. and useful stuff. Like mm. I hate it in the early stages of discoveries, it's all doom and gloom. Yes. And then we start getting to the point where we're going, okay, no, I understand this thing. It's always been there. Yeah. We've always had a way of managing it to a certain degree. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I reckon this when, is really cool. When they synthesized into Lugan 17 in 1993, which is when they discovered in rats, they gave it back to the rats and it killed them. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, this can't be <laughs> obviously dose dependent. Yeah. But, but you know, it, it's in the body for a reason. Yeah. Every chemical's in the body there for a reason, or, you know, you, you know it, genes are there for a reason. And, and, and we, 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 we say how bad it genes. is. Yeah, I'll wear genes. For a damn good reason. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know that song? No, I don't know that oh, song. Oh, it's an old song. Sing it again. I put my blue jeans on. I put my old blue jeans on. Good. Yeah, that would be really <laughs> good. <laughs> he turned out to work once with no pants. Terrible. Well, that was just once. You yeah. know, you can't hold me to that, can you? Yeah. We all tricked you and we all went around. It's a dream. I oh, know. <laughs> I know. And I said, look, you can clearly see I'm nuts, though. <laughs> no, you weren't wrapped in glad wrap. Yeah. That's a guy who goes to the doctor, totally wrapped in glad wrap, and the doctor looks up at him and says, man, I can clearly see your nuts. Yes, very clearly. <laughs> oh, and then they... Oh, no. I don't think they're there. Mm. Anyway. So let's wrap it up. We've got this T-Opera 1, T-Opera 2, T-Opera 3, or regulatory, and T-Opera yep. 17. Yep. Bit freaky. They all yep. have good things. Don't pick on them. They're all good. Yep. But too much of them, some of them bad. Exactly. Too much one causes uh, problems and, you know, yep. causes it, 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 but it's supposed to fight the viruses and bacteria. The two causes too much mucus, asthma, those sort of yep. conditions. But, you know, it's a flush worms. TLP3 is a good guy. It regulates it, suppresses immu- too much of that, suppresses the immune system too much, and you're yep. open to infection. TLP17 causes all this crappy um, disease we've talked about, but you need yep. it to, you know, As a first an immune defense. system for your skin and for, mm. your, for your gut. Yeah. That's a real summary yeah. of it. Oh, I'm really excited about it. I can't, actually, I'm really looking forward to getting this document just created up so yeah. we can give someone something really useful because a lot of people have been stuck in that TLP1, TLP2 mode and it just yeah. doesn't fit perfectly. And this explains the missing link between why was it such a wobbly old seesaw? Yeah, and, yeah. and, and sinicolumab, which is a, a new drug coming out to treat um, AS and all these, it's only in phase three trials, so I don't mm. ask you that for uh, it, it. It basically puts out antibodies to interleukin-17. So yeah. it basically destroys interleukin-17, and the early trials are, yeah. if you do that, um, yes, the, basically yeah. the disease basically disappears, yeah. but it's got some terrible side effects. Oh, awesome. Bad but we'll, bring, we'll do an update on that when yeah. it's ready. When it's ready. Oh, that's all it, mate. We're way out of time. Yeah, good stuff. That'll show them. Edit the hell out of that, Vanessa. <laughs> all all right. right. Well, thanks for joining us today on the podcast. And we'll see you next time. Absolutely. Right. See you guys. Bye. But anyway... They've I've got it from great authority. <laughs> <laughs> Cut all that. <laughs> Edit all that stuff out. Do this again. I don't know if you're supposed to. Okay, three, two, one. Okay.